From Chicago's CAN TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs, and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. And hello again, once again, welcome to Chicago Newsroom right here on CAN TV. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks for joining us again for another week. Uh, this week, we have uh, an attorney joining us today because we've got Matt Farmer. I've been on the program before. Matt, glad to have you back. Matt writes for Huffington Post, is an attorney of his own right, a musician, and has written a lot about personal liberty and um, education issues. And I'm just glad to have you on the show again. Matt. Good to be Thanks back, Ken. And also, Randy Bellissimo, who probably needs no introduction to anybody who has a television set, who's lived in Chicago for a while, from Channel 9, WGN, assignment, uh, general assignment reporter, anchor, all kinds of things. Thanks Randy, for having me. Randy, great to have you on the show for the first time. So, could we start with a little bit of a, of a, of a host rant, if you don't mind? And, and, and as a, I'm glad we have an attorney present, because you can cut me off if I go off the, if I go off the tracks here. Sure. Okay? So, I, as a private citizen, who may or may not be in trouble with the city of Chicago because maybe I've parked a couple of times when I shouldn't have or maybe I've run through some kind of camera that's automatically decided that I'm guilty of something. I rack up a few tickets and I make the affirmative decision that I'm not going to pay them. Now that's a stupid thing because I know the city's going to come after me. They might be able to boot me. They might take my car. They might, you know, come after my children or something. But I make that decision. Now the city of Chicago is telling me that they are mafioso-like, going to dip their beak into my Illinois tax return before I even get to put it in the bank and decide that I'm not going to give them the money. They're going to make the decision for me. This just feels. This is bringing out the Ron Paul in me. This is like grotesque government overreach. I mean, what are we doing here? I, I don't know that it's unprecedented. Uh, for example, there is a, arguably an analogous provision as it relates to deadbeat dads and child support. Mm -hmm. At some point, the, the feds can get in and start uh, uh, putting holes on tax refunds mm -hmm. to collect mm -hmm. back child support. I will note that I think yesterday the vote uh, on this provision in City Hall, I believe, was 42 to 8. Yeah. And among the eight who opposed it are folks who perhaps uh, are, are thinking they may not be around in the council the next go round like because of the remaps, right. Spazzato, right. Fioretti, right. et cetera. Right. So, so I, 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 I think the, the city. That's almost like a 50 50 vote if you give me exactly. eight, eight cents. That's like, wow. <laughs> and, and I would guess that the Corporation Counsel Office uh, examined the legality and possible constitutionality uh, you know, of or constitutional challenges to it before pushing forward. It's, uh, as Alderman Fioretti said, his biggest concern was what he called the kangaroo courts. Yeah. That, uh, you know, he, he was referring to the administrative hearings right, right. Uh, that. Uh, result in the adjudication well, as I of understand, As I understand the law on that, you go, to, you go to your administrative hearing because you got a red light ticket, and the argument is, well, the camera took a picture of you. You're obviously guilty. There's no need to trial. There's no need to have a trial. You're just guilty. Pay. I mean, that's pretty much the way it works, right? There are limited defenses uh, to, <laughs> yes, to, to, the there are. Cam to the camera tickets. I think the flip side of that is they say, we're not going to ding your your license with, with well, points. Well, yeah, don't get me started on you this. You should pay your delinquent tickets, Ken. <laughs> Thank you. <Rick. laughs> you really should, and Thank I think we're going to be getting advice. a lot more now that the, the, the speeding cameras are going up in the school zones. Well, you know. 47% of the city geography could be covered with this, these. This takes us to just a whole bunch of stuff, not the least of which is, I don't know if anybody saw this um, transcript of the interview that occurred in the mayor's office with uh, Mr. Kidwell from the uh, Chicago Tribune, a reporter with whom I must say, honestly, I haven't been familiar up until now. We I, all I, are now. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, he made a name for himself because he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rahm Emanuel for over an hour trying to get information from him about how they made the decision to put in the school cameras, the red light, or the uh, speeding cameras. Not about how you say you govern. We want to know how you govern. How that you was, do it. That was right. the essence right. of this interview right. because so much of covering Mayor Emanuel um, whether you like it or don't like it, he sets out charts and lists, a 90-day list of accomplishments. I got three Year things. One. One. One, two, and he'll count <laughs> on fingers, right, right. Uh, two and a half fingers that <laughs> right, he has. That's right. And, and he will let you know, and he sets metrics and he meets them. Um, and that's the way that we cover the mayor. But, he, but this reporter 
rightly so, wanted to find out what's going on inside, how those decisions are made, and asked for 167 emails pertaining mm -hmm. to the camera decision, the water rate decision, and the vehicle stickers decision. He got 22 of the 167 he asked for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there, the, he, while Mayor Emanuel touts transparency, it's mm -hmm. really not as transparent as he says it is. What I found most interesting about it is that I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. Rahm Emanuel is obviously not accustomed to being confronted this way. And instead of just saying, okay, look, I mean, he, he, made all, he insulted him all through the whole thing about you don't respect me, I don't respect you, let's not kid each other. But the most in interesting thing about it is that he would not give up on trying to convince this guy that he is that he is transparent and when when Kidwell would come back and say no you're not transparent you're not telling me what I need to know instead of just saying well okay thanks very much I've got more things more important things to do get out which is what mm -hmm. Mayor Daley certainly would have done sure. um, he just kept this going he kept this kind of like this like childlike argument he really that they were having it. for an hour for uh, 16 pages of transcript yeah, they went yeah, back and forth yeah. and they never got to the the meat of what was in the email, right. but they're just talking about a, a philosophical issue as whether he is transparent. I think um, there's obviously something he doesn't want people to know in those 22 emails. Right, and right. I thought what was really interesting at the end is he acknowledged that he believes that an email um, falls into the category of a phone of call. Of a phone call, right. And right, it, it wasn't until privileged. about page 15 that he said that, what's mm -hmm. protected under FOIA. Right, and right. email is is not a phone call. Right, and right. and then we had a conversation of, is your phone call, phone city issue? Right. And then the mayor said, do you think how I spend my time is checking on my city issued cell phone? He doesn't phone? even know. He doesn't know and he's city. insulted right, by the question. Right. Well, I actually, I had never met Mr. Kidwell. Yeah. On the strength of his interview alone, I started up my subscription again to the Tribune, a paper <laughs> with which I've had a like-hate relationship over years, uh -huh. usually fueled by its, its yeah. editorial board positions. Yeah, yeah. I emailed Mr. Kidwell a couple of days ago and, and told him, I, you know, and I congratulated mm -hmm. him. And what I said to him was that a, as a trial lawyer, I have the luxury of putting someone under oath across the table right, before I right, start my right, questions. Right. And I generally have the luxury of not fearing that that person's going to get up and leave. Mm -hmm. Now, to his credit, Mr. Manuel stayed in that room and sat through the interview. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your note, Randy, about the uh, phone conversations or the equivalent of email, he said that right out front. That was one of the first things mm -hmm. he said, which, which floored me because you know, I don't care what you think, Mr. Mayor, that's not what the law that's says. That's not the law, yeah. Now, you know, there's a tension, obviously, anytime you have executive uh, officials, their ability to deliberate mm -hmm. and gain counsel from their advisors uh, versus what they're going to turn over to the public. And as we know, with FOIA issues, uh, that exception is frequently used to swallow the rule right, and, and, right. and also to kill stories that, that may become stale by the time FOIA issues mm -hmm. are, are, are litigated. I did expect fully, halfway through reading the interview, to read the, the great uh, for a few good men quote, uh, to see Rom go Colonel Jessup and say, I have neither the time nor the inclination <laughs> to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom that I provide and I question the provide. manner in which I provide it. I mean, th and that, and that was the tone. The truth. That was the tone of the, <laughs> the, the right. interview. Right, right. Oh, it, it absolutely was. was. But very paternalistic. And I, I thought, <laughs> I really thought, the w one thing that really bothered me, I think both of them played their roles very well as mayor and as reporter, but the one thing that bothered me, one of the things that, that Mayor Emanuel said, was if people wanted to know, they would ask me themselves. Yes. <laughs> yes. And what does he think the role of the press is, right, if not right. to ask the questions right. that the public well, wants to Well, obviously know. he has his view about what the press is and the, should be. What the press be. is and shouldn't be and how right. much access people actually have to his but office. But you know, I, I don't want to get too swallowed up in the discussion about the process of, you know, uh, whether the emails should be distributed or not, mm. and, and not lose sight of the fact that this decision about these red light cameras is is onerous to, 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 the, to the utmost degree. Here we have using, using what I believe are just phony arguments, uh, emotions about protecting the children, we just committed ourselves to putting red light cameras over half the city of mm -hmm. Chicago. So you drive at six miles an hour over the speed limit, and dear viewers, you have driven over six miles an hour in the city of Chicago at some time in your driving life. I just know you have. And if you drive now in half of the city of Chicago, you're going to get a ticket in the mail and you're going to be guilty. Right? 
Is that not right? Correct. And if it's 11 miles an hour, you get to ticket for $100. $100. So this is, this is we, serious business. we've discovered a whole new way to tax people that is that is so creative that you've got to just really take off your hat and hand it to well, them. It is amazing. They're going to get millions, tens of millions of dollars out of this. And you have to hand it to, to Pat Quinn because I think he successfully repaired his relationship with <laughs> Mayor Emanuel after the casino debacle. Right. Now they're best friends again, yeah. but the rest of the city is reeling. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't, again, we've not seen any of these numbers. None of them have been given to us in the public. But I follow the news pretty carefully, and I know you guys do. And if you had asked me six weeks ago what are the top ten issues in Chicago, children being hit by cars, speeding past schools would not have been on that list. And Mr. Kidwell did a fine job of, of trying to point out to the mayor that you are pushing this legislation through, citing data that you've refused to provide right, to us. And right, even more right. shameful, using the death of a six-year-old girl, Diamond Robinson, who right. was killed by a car mm -hmm. on a Saturday night, right, mm -hmm. right. when even by the mayor's standards, mm -hmm. these it cameras are not going to be applicable. That's exactly right. But, but trotting that out in support of this argument, and, and you see it a lot both at CPS and now with this mayor, where what we are doing is for the children. Mm -hmm. How dare you question yeah, me? Yeah. You must be against well, the, the children. The, the hypocrisy of it is just so rich that it, I mean, it's like, uh, Congress couldn't be more hypocritical mm -hmm. than this. This this notion that if if you really if we really had a problem with children being harmed mm -hmm. by speeding cars, then you could put up those little sign things that that say you know your your speed is 35 miles mm -hmm. an hour. Those have been proven to 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 slow traffic down. You could even mail people notices that they have this, and uh, you know th this th is th th there are all sorts of ways to do it. It is about the money, follow the money. It is a great way to raise a lot of money. And, and where, if it weren't, where's the science? Where's the data? Right. I, I, it was countless articles we've all read in the past several years that Chicago is a very pedestrian friendly city. Mm -hmm. It really is, and that's why it was, I think six years ago that I covered the last uh, little girl got run over, Maya Hirsch. It sticks with me today because it was so sad because it doesn't happen that very mm -hmm. often and it had to happen to her at Belden and Lincoln Park West. And it sticks with that. me today. Right. It was not around a school. It was a speeding car. Mm -hmm. These cameras wouldn't have prevented wouldn't have that. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you can, you, you can mark my word on this that Four years from now, the aldermen who voted for this are going to regret it the way they vote. They regret the parking meter deal because it's they're going to be their constituents are going to be ticked off. And by, I know one this. of the lone dissenters in Springfield is from Ravenswood North Center area, and she said these really change the character of a neighborhood when you feel yeah. like cameras are watching, are you, watching everywhere. you everywhere. Yeah, and yeah. more and more are going yeah. up. And yeah. Well, but uh, again, uh, I, we will say Mayor Emanuel did have a. Did have a good explanation for it. He just didn't know about a lot of this stuff, just like he didn't know who the ministers were. Your guys did uh, Channel Nine did a very nice job with this uh, this story a couple of weeks ago about the paid protesters. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, I'm sure you feel really embarrassed having done that story because Mayor Emanuel said he just had no idea that this was going on. He had no idea that these ministers were doing it, and the fact that his close associate Greg Goldner was apparently the one who was paying them, he just didn't know about that. So, are you prepared what do you to think? apologize? At this point? <laughs> I didn't do the story, <laughs> <laughs> and I plead the fifth. It wasn't, it wasn't me. But I that that was shocking to read in the paper. What do you think? That the mayor didn't know what Mr. Goldner was doing. I, I think it's the same uh, situation the mayor found himself in, not knowing what Don Tomzak and his uh, patronage army was doing on the mayor's behalf <coughs> back in 2002. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe it for a minute. <laughs> and, and what's more troubling, I, I think it was the expired meter uh, blog. <coughs> in Chicago that covers a lot of the parking issues. They noted about six or seven months ago that Mr. <coughs> Goldner and a couple of his colleagues from Resolute Consulting in Chicago formed a, a uh, advocacy group, an astroturf advocacy group, to go down to <coughs> Texas, and it was called the Texas Traffic Safety Coalition, three Chicagoans, mind you, to lobby and fight against a municipality that was going to put uh, forth a referendum on red light cameras. Mm. Not put in red light cameras, but have a referendum. Correct. Mm. And so they wanted to go <laughs> kill the vote because they knew that, I think, out of the 16 times it had ever been put to a public vote, it had been voted down. Mm -hmm. So uh, the mayor's uh, consulting colleagues up here in Chicago formed their own group to get involved in Texas uh, red light camera issues. And they've done it in a, in a couple other states. And you can look it up uh, uh, you know, online and see what they're all about. But yeah, they're everywhere. They find the reports that work for them. Right. So 
All right, I've had my rant, <clears throat> and uh, and I will continue to have this rant. But what what do you think? Uh, what do you think are the are the biggest stories that are going on right now in Chicago? Are you are you bothered about the, uh, for example, the the uh, city council vote yesterday that uh, you can't protest inside the city council chambers anymore? Is that is that really a, an abridgment of our freedoms? That's been going on for so you know decades. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. Chicago without it. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know the legal ramifications and, and what is really, where are you allowed to protest? This is a public building. It seems like people could be there. Mm -hmm. What do you, as a lawyer, what do you think? Well, I, I don't do uh, First Amendment work, but there are usually time uh, place and manner restrictions that are right. permitted on different types of speech. But that's that's what the that's what the sergeant of arms is for. Right. That's right. what the police are for. You, you and, haul people and out when yeah. they act. And aldermen need to see the people that are against them. I well, absolutely right. And and as the ACLU pointed out yesterday, what about the people who are sitting there peacefully, who are not involved in this? And now the the mayor has the ability to just clear the chambers to throw mm. everybody out, which which seems, seems very tyrannical. Well, yeah. I was I was I was out of town. Uh, questioning a witness uh, back in uh, December when the CPS or the Board of Education had its December meeting which was as you may recall shut down mm -hmm. by right. uh, a mic check you know pulling mm -hmm. the old uh, Occupy uh, mic check uh, mm -hmm. tactic a and the, the board up and left and I'm sure they fear that happening again. They've got yeah, gonna, yeah. what's going to be a contentious yeah. meeting on school closings next week. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the mayor sees that. He sees the G8 NATO crowd coming and they're trying to figure out you know, what can we do to, to rein people in? And I think, was it Alderman Munoz who uh, put up the ordinance to ensure that the police and other law enforcement do not shut down, for example, the uh, the, the cell towers and things that will mm -hmm. allow Twitter communications? Right, right, right. So there is a, a real concern I, I about the abridgment of speech. I think the, um, I, I, I really kind of want to get your perspective on this, but the, the almost level of paranoia mm -hmm. that we're being subjected mm -hmm. to over this NATO and G8 thing mm -hmm. is is really striking. I mean, uh, yeah, I think there is there clearly is potential that we could have some big disruptions in the city, but you know, if 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 there was such huge concern about that, then why did we ask to have them in the first place? Uh, you know, that that's the part. Where, that I, I, I'm sorry. Did, yeah. did we ask <laughs> to have them? Is we the people asked. Yes, yeah, so it was like kind of yes. like we the people asked for the Olympics. <laughs> right. That's right. right yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know what's interesting about that is that, in a way, this is kind of like a like a a, a, a cheap man's version of the Olympics because. Mm -hmm. When Mayor Daley was being asked about just exactly what will we get out of this from the Olympics, one of the things he was very fond of saying, and, and I thought he was right, was those morning shows on the networks that will start with those beauty shots of Chicago, mm -hmm. you can't buy that kind of, of PR. Well, you know, we're going to get that with the G8. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, they'll, they'll immediately cut, of course, to all of the, it's just who's in the riot program. police in the streets. <laughs> right. but. But still, I mean, I think, you know, if you want a quick shot of putting Chicago on the map, where I think as Chicagoans we probably all believe we belong, then this probably is not a bad thing. I'm not, I'm not opposed to having the thing here, but I just don't understand why we have to sort of like immediately surrender all of our rights just mm -hmm. in case something might go wrong. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. And another issue um, that keeps coming up, and I heard Superintendent McCarthy discuss it last week at a forum at, two weeks ago at a forum at, Loyola is the Illinois has one of the strictest eavesdropping rules yes, yeah. in the nation and I know that that's being challenged right now but you cannot record a conversation with a police officer mm -hmm. and this is obviously of big concern to protesters who are coming right, well, how right. are we to ensure that their rights are not being mm -hmm, broken mm -hmm. and superintendent McCarthy says he's all for it I think he said something to the effect not as strong as I am that's fine mm -hmm. overturn it I want our police officers to be held accountable but that's not the, the law in the state mm -hmm. and I think people that are coming here because since we'll have protesters from all over the world they need to know that this is not the most progressively liberal mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. place in terms of protesting laws. And, and all of this is coming uh, against the backdrop of a recent $6.2 million settlement that the city is paying out mm -hmm. for its treatment of the war protesters mm -hmm. back in 2004. Let's turn our attention to schools because Matt, you certainly write a lot about schools and uh, I, I think it's, it would be very interesting for us to take a look at this story about the Noble Street Charter Schools and their fees and fines that uh, made the news. I, I was interested in it because it really isn't new. It's been reported in the news for over a year or more that, that they're doing that, but suddenly it just kind of popped into this big story. 
and and I, I put it in context with uh, the Juan Williams quote unquote documentary. On our program last week, we had uh, Mr. Brizard here, and we played him some of the video of Mayor Emanuel saying that the Noble School charters were the best schools he's ever seen, best run high schools he's ever seen, which uh, must be embarrassing for the superintendent since he's trying to run some public schools that are, you know, that are, that are conventional public schools. Anyway, having said all that, is this a, a tempest in a teapot, this thing about these fines, or, or does it mask something bigger? Well, I, I think what it does in the media attention uh, that has uh, come about as a result of the, the recent story, which you, know, you pointed out, we've known about these fines for a couple of years, Sarah Karp, Ben Jarofsky, others have, mm -hmm. have talked about mm -hmm. it, but I believe it was because of a FOIA request where we found the, the dollars How much be, behind them, $387,000 yeah. over the course of a couple of years for mm -hmm. the, the 10 or 12 noble schools. Uh, so that is what got it back in the news cycle. That combined with it, you know, what you pointed out, the mayor doing his infomercial for the, the Noble Schools with, with uh, Juan Williams, it, they're clearly favored sons, uh, just like the AUSL schools. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the ties go deep, you know, Mr. Ron or Mr. Milky, those were names that were bandied about both on the mayor's education task force and as potential heads of uh, uh, CPS, members of the Board of Ed. For my money, you know, the, the noble schools seem to be faring well in terms of their, their test scores, results. But we're not on a level playing field. I, and I say that because if you look at the Illinois State Board of Education report cards for the noble charter network, they, uh, for example, in 2011, uh, had a student population that was just 4.8% limited English proficient. District 299, the Chicago Public School District for high schools, was 15.8% percent mm -hmm. limited English proficient mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. So you, you know you've got a tougher nut to crack when you're yeah. trying to educate and get, get uh, uh, great test scores from kids who aren't working in English as a first language when, when they're being tested mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So it, we're not getting an apples to apples comparison. Uh, you know as Ben pointed out in his article for the reader uh, a year ago, you know he talked to the folks at Kelvin Park High School which sits near uh, Noble's Pritzker School. Mm -hmm. And he talked to, to, to the folks at Kelvin Park and they said uh, listen, we're getting a lot of uh, folks who are counseled out of or, right, or right, know, right. pushed out of, of uh, Pritzker. A and he said, we've got, uh, you know, over at, at Kelvin Park, 17.9% of the kids, uh, you know, have IEPs, special needs kids, versus 7.1% at, mm -hmm. at, at uh, mm -hmm. Pritzker. So, you know, we can talk all we want about this school having the special sauce and the parents demand that we find their kids five or ten bucks. But originally when charter schools came about in the late 60s, early 70s, they were supposed to be laboratories for experiments. Mm -hmm. The idea was that if we find practices mm -hmm. that we should replicate, mm -hmm. we should put them into the larger public school mm -hmm. system. Right. Now, I would hope... You can't put that into the no. private, pu into the public school uh, system in general. If, if there's somebody that you don't particularly want to have, you can c kind of we find them out the door. Well, well but, if, but if the mayor and Mr. Bizarre are such true believers in the special sauce and the, the discipline that these fines seem to, uh, to help bring about within the noble schools, let's make it system-wide, Mr. Mayor. Let's, mm -hmm. let's see how that works out. Right. A and you may run into a problem with Article 10 of the Illinois State Constitution, which provides that the education through secondary level shall be free. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know how that would play out. I know people yeah. are talking about challenging the noble. And you'd also system. have problems if all of these schools were able to pretty much at will dismiss kids that they really just kind of don't want around because they screw up their graduation rates, mm -hmm. and there's no public schools to take them. Right. Now, the so, upside for the mayor is I, I'm looking forward to a press conference in the next week or two where he's going to announce that the Noble Street Charter Network is bringing 300 new jobs to Chicago to help uh, process and collect fines. You know, so we, we may see that. <laughs> Nothing would surprise me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is there... Uh, are we kind of done with this? Can we turn to Pat Quinn for a second? We got like a minute or two left. But if you, if you, if no, uh, I uh, thought I cut Pat you off. Pat Quinn and John Rice and I, Pat Quinn is waffling on the um, on the gay marriage mm. possibility in Springfield. I find that interesting. It's like after he's been so pummeled by the uh, Catholic clergy, you would think that his attitude is, well, whatever they want, I don't care anymore. But but apparently, I don't know what is it. Is is the Catholicism in him coming back or or what? What what's going on there? Randy, I can tell. Well, 
He's a weekly mass att attendee at Assumption Parish in mm -hmm. Illinois at 5 o'clock on Sunday. I, I see him there. When you say and weekly, is it W-E-A-K-L-Y? <laughs> or, or? Weekly. Okay. Okay. Every single and, week. And uh, I know he's faithful. I I'm, I'm, would never say anything um, negative about his faith at all. I, I know that he is a Catholic and a, and a practicing one. I, I think that, I don't know, I, when we saw the casino issue, he took up to the last day to make his decision. Mm -hmm. With the red light camera, with the speeding camera issue, he mm -hmm. took up to the last day to take this right. issue. If this is thoughtful governance, I, that's what I want to believe that it is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I think it could be politically risky either way to just come out with a decision yeah, yeah, the next yeah. day, yes or no. What do you think? So what, what do you think? You think, you think he's going to go with it or not? You have, you have a sense of it? No. Okay. I don't. Right. I don't. I can't call it. Like the good reporter you are, I can't you call don't it. know. You can't predict these things. No. Yeah. I think, think? I think he's going to uh, go the same route that uh, our uh, president took when he was down in Springfield, which is, you know, uh, not come out in favor of a gay marriage. Mm -hmm. That our president still takes. Still takes, correct. Right, right. Because it's just, it's it's still too hot, even correct. in Illinois. Well, particularly in Illinois, because you have this Catholic weird. Church. Yeah, you also have this incredibly bifurcated state where That's there's true. sort of a lot of lefties in Chicago and a lot of not. Yeah, it's, it's an easy position for the mayor to take up here in Chicago. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Civil union seems to be yeah, the status quo yeah, right now. Yeah. Um, the uh, city of Chicago is the most corrupt city in the in the United States of America. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. We covered that. <laughs> Check. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have the show. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, anyway, I I um, I just think that we uh, we really have to kind of keep an eye on this this school situation way more than it is. I just I just came from the uh, uh, CTU, uh, the union headquarters, just minutes before we came in here. They're having their press conference this morning with their announcement about how they believe you should fix the Chicago public schools. And uh, it's, a, it's a very different vision than the one mm. that, that J.C. Brizard and the mayor have put forth. And it's, um, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, there were a lot of cameras there. We'll look tonight and see if they get any, if they get any play on it. But, mm -hmm. I mean, they're up against such a, a sort of a, what feels to me like a real public backlash that they are the problem. And that's something that has been really promulgated by not just the mayor, but by politics in general. So. Well, and, and we're at a point in our, our nation's history right now where across the country, public sector unions are taking a beating. Mm -hmm. and, and so the Chicago Teachers Union, apart from finding itself in a tough, tough spot in a, a tough urban school district, also happens to be a public sector union. But at mm -hmm. the same time, she was just named out this month one of the most Karen 100 Lewis. most powerful women in Chicago, was people right? in Chicago by Karen Chicago Lewis? Magazine. Oh, okay. Oh. Along okay. with John Paul Brizard and Rahm Emanuel, three of the 100. Yeah, yeah. There Penny, you go. Penny, the Prisker, the Penny Prisker was number eight, I believe. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, that's where, that's where we're at. We'll, we, we will be watching that, and we'll, uh, we'll talk some more about that next week. We're, gonna, we're hoping we can get Karen Lewis to come back on the show and, and give her her side, give us her side of that, uh, of that story. I want to thank my friends and guests for being here with us today. Randy Bellissimo from Channel 9. Thank you very much, Randy, Thanks for, for having being here. Me. And Matt Farmer from HuffPo. And uh, you can see Matt. He's just all over the place. Just look in the reader. You'll see the listings for music. He's probably playing somewhere tonight. <laughs> and we will be back here again tomorrow. Or not tomorrow. We'll be back here. No, if only. We'll be back here next week with another edition of, can of uh, Chicago Newsroom right here on Can TV. And, of course, you can find us and all the other programs right here on cable. But you can also see this and all the programs online at cantv.org. Uh, backsplash, uh, if you do the backsplash, if you do the backslash newsroom, it'll take you right here to the archive of Chicago Newsroom. And you can check us out on iTunes and all that good stuff. We'll see you next week. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks so much for joining us. And good luck to you. Take it easy. Thank you.